Father, we thank you this morning. We are grateful. We give you all the glory and honor for the gift of life. Life is a gift from you. We appreciate you, Lord, for the gift of our life, for the gift of another day. Thank you, Father. Thank you because you are faithful, you are kind, you are merciful, you are gracious. It is by your grace that we are alive. And we acknowledge it in all ways. Father, we return all the glory to you. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. This morning, O oh Lord, we ask that you will speak to us like never before. Words of grace, words of correction, words of illumination, words of comfort, words of encouragement, words that build up in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And it is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. I ask that the word will bring answer from heaven to every soul. It will dispel our fear and develop our faith in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, glorify Jesus again. Let the name of the Father be glorified. In Jesus' name, I pray. This morning, I want to continue to look at the name of Jesus as our spiritual resource. The resource of the spirit that makes us untouchable. When the devil is bringing a lot of issues in the world, you must have proper response in the Lord. Hear me. Anytime the Lord, the devil brings a lot of negative issues in the world, you must have a proper response in the Lord. The devil does not respect status. The devil does not respect age. The devil does not respect financial status. The devil doesn't respect any material thing. But the devil respect your response from the Lord. Did you hear me now? So you cannot face life without having a response from the Lord. Because the devil will always, all the time, throw up issues. This coronavirus is a global issue. Thrown up by the devil. How many of you ever thought that when we were shouting Happy New Year that this is how the year will look like. Did you hear what I'm saying? Praise God. But even in this, God is perfecting his purpose in your life if you are a child of God. There is nothing God has ordained for you to have this year that you will not have. Except God did he ordain it. How many of you believe that? If they like, let there be lockdown for the next, for till December. There is nothing God has ordained for you to have that He cannot give you. But your faith may stop you. That's why you must work on your faith. Because if God has ordained something and it didn't get to you, it is not God, it's you now. You must check your faith. For me, all the time, I check my faith. I check my faith. I check my faith. Because God has no problem. It is man that has problem. And most of the time, what we see around affects our faith. What we see around affects our faith. What we see around shakes our faith. And makes us hopeless. But when you get more into the word of God, your faith is built up. Your faith is built up. Your faith is built up. Keep your focus on the power of God and not on the problem of life. That's when your faith will come up. Are you following what I'm saying now? Somebody said in a mockery way that oh, with all the prophets we have, with all the, with all the pastors we have in Nigeria, in the world and all that, so nobody ever saw this about 2020. And he began to mock men of God began to mock fathers in the faith 
And he began to say, it's only money they know. And then a lot of people are making, when I read some comments on Facebook, I shake my head. Because some people don't know where they have stumbled with their mouth. It is when life begins, when they begin to reap the fruit of their stumbleness that they begin to find that, what, what happened to me? What, what, ah, why now? Why now? Why now? Why now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And as they begin to talk about it, they said, ah, ah, ah. And I asked the Holy Spirit, Lord, ah, ah, this is what they are saying. What, what did you say? I don't want to take my opinion from them. I want to hear what, they, and the Lord said, look, the secret things belong to the Lord. That I, you will only know what I want you to know. That it's not everything that I tell my prophet. I have reservation that makes me God. I have some reservation that is the secret of my sovereignty. I can only tell you what I want to tell you. What I want to keep secret, I'll keep secret. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me that, didn't you hear Jesus when Jesus said that the day of his coming back, even him doesn't know. That it is the Father alone that knows. I asked myself, why? Praise God. So all the people saying Jesus will come back in 2020. Jesus will come back in 2025. They are just joke, joking. Jesus said, he himself doesn't know that he is the Father alone that knows. So the secret things belong to God. If we like, let us fast from here to Jesus come. He will only tell you what he wants to tell you. That's why he tells you, wants to tell you part time. And I said, wow. I kept quiet. I did not want to partake in the ignorance of people. Is that okay? Praise God. If God wants to tell us about how this year is going to look like exactly the way it is, he will tell us. But even at that, the Lord said, I have given signs. I have warned my people. I have sent words ahead. I have given sight that the only ones that are sensitive out of them, these things is not special or strange to them. Did you hear what I say now? Truly, truly, has God not given sign? Has he not spoken about this? That there will be sicknesses and diseases in the world? Has he not spoken about in the Bible? Has he not even told us before? Praise God. But the truth of the matter is this. You will know as much as he wants you to know. So your response must come from the Lord. That is when you can face any issue that the devil is bringing up. Are you hearing me now? Open your Bible to Psalm 20. I'm reading verses 7 and 8. Psalm 20 verses 7 and 8. Some trust in chariot. And some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen. But we are risen and stand upright. You look at this scripture very well. I will explain verse 7 now. When I begin to teach, I will talk about verse 8. But this is verse 7. Some trust in what? In chariot and some in horses, but we will do what? Remember the name of the Lord our God. Now, listen to this. Now, if you look at that scripture, you discover that the Bible has taken it for granted that we trust in God. They have taken it for granted because when he says some trust in chariot and some in horses, when it concerns us. We do more than trust. We trust too, but we do more than trust. So the Bible are taking it for granted that we trust. Because we are supposed to trust. Is somebody hearing me now? But we do more than trust. That is why our trust is meaningful. We do more than trust. What is the more that we do more than trust? We trust God, but we do more. We will remember the name of the Lord our God. 
when practical life issues begin to come, more than the theoretical trust, we will practically remember. How many of you know that your problem can make you forget the name of the Lord? How many of you know crisis of life can make you forget God? How many of you know that the problems of life can make you forget the passages of scriptures? Especially when they come in torrent. And they come without notice. You will be shaking and shaking and you don't know what to do. Have you had people that say, well, I don't know what to do. 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 It is at that point that we do more than trust. We actually remember the name of the Lord our God. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Hello? What is the proof of your trust when in practical crisis of life you do not remember the name of the Lord? What is the meaning of your trust when in practical situation you do not remember the name of the Lord? Trust is only theoretical when you cannot remember in the time of crisis the name of the Lord. Church is good. All of us are seated, taking notes and shaking our heads. But what do you do with what you have written when life crisis come? That is the proof that you trust. Is somebody hearing me now? When issues begin to come up, and they, they are coming like that. And you don't know what to do. And suggestions from men begin to come. And somebody say, well, I know some place. Let me take you to one baba. He will give you one water. And when you use the water to bath, ah, do you remember the promises of God at such point? And suggestions come here, suggestions come Suggestion come from different corner, and then you say, "Ha! What will I do?" The passages of scripture will disappear from your memory. So your 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 claim to trust God is fake. Hello, somebody. Your claim of trust is fake. But Psalm twenty verse seven is saying, "Look here, for the name of God to work for you, you must do more than trust." You must do more than trust. It's not a big deal when you trust the name of the Lord. That is what you should do, first and foremost. But you must go beyond that. You must actually remember the name of the Lord our God. Have you faced a situation that you say, I want to pray? And somebody says, is this a matter of prayer? Have you faced any situation that you say, well, let me call my pastor? And somebody says, is it a matter of calling pastor? Beloved, are you hearing what I'm saying now? Amen. You must do more than trust. You must actually remember the name of the Lord our God in the middle of the crisis of life. In the middle of the crisis of life. In the middle of the crisis of life. In the middle of the hopelessness of life. You must not only trust the name of the Lord, you must remember, you must do more than trust. You must move away from trusting to remembering the name of the Lord. When the crisis of life is closing in on you. Amen. Are you getting something? Now, I want you to put your hand in that Psalm 20 and let's go to Proverbs chapter 8. Chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. I'm still talking about the name of Jesus. But today, what I want to look at is the revelation of the name of God in the Old Testament. And the connection it has with the name of Jesus. Obviously, I can't finish today. I'll finish Fellowship of Firstborn next week. The revelation of the name of God in the Old Testament. And the connection that it has with the name of Jesus. Because you will never understand the name of Jesus as a resource of the spirit that makes you untouchable until you understand the revelation of the name of God in the Old Testament. Hello, somebody. Hello. 
Hello? You will not get a full revelation of the name of Jesus and what that name can do until you have a revelation of the name of God in the Old Testament and what connection it has with the name of Jesus. I want you to write that statement down because that is the center of our teaching. You will not be able to fully understand the power in the name of Jesus until you understand the revelation of God in the Old Testament and how it is and what connection does he have with the name of Jesus. There is a way God revealed himself in the Old Testament. What is that way? How did God reveal himself in the Old Testament? How did God reveal himself in the Old Testament? And how does that revelation connect to the name of Jesus? That is when you will have a, a, a revelation that will make you profit from the name of Jesus in all dimensions. I don't want you to be calling the name of Jesus religiously. That's why we need this teaching, this truth. Is that okay? That's why you need this truth. That's why you need this truth. That's why you need this truth. How does God reveal himself in the Old Testament? As far as his name is concerned. And what does that revelation have in connection with the name of Jesus? Then you will note that the revelation of God is progressive from the Old Testament to the New Testament. How many of you understand what I'm saying now? Praise God. So look at Proverbs chapter 18 now. I'm reading verse 10. The Holy Spirit showed me this scripture more than I've ever seen it before. I discovered that this season in my life, there is no scripture that is new to me. But God is giving me more understanding of the scriptures that I thought I knew. Did you hear what I just said? That you have read it over the years doesn't mean you fully understand the revelation. That's why you need faith to follow God every time. That's why there is no room for pride because you have not known God the way you should know him. Proverbs 18.10 I have been reading it for years. But God is bringing a dimension of understanding that will create faith and make it work for me today. Let me see your Bible. Raise up your Bible. Raise up your Bible, everybody. Do you know that every word in that scripture is not for decoration, it's for demonstration in your life. They've got to work for you. Did you hear what I'm saying? Every word in that scripture must work for you. If it is not going to work for you, God will not write it. So, for the work, for the word to work for you now, because the Bible says, "Man shall by bread alone." Is that not in the Bible? But by what? Every word, every word that is all of it that God has said, that the Holy Ghost has written down. In the form of our Bible. That is what makes you to truly live. So if that word that is written in the Bible is going to work for you. You must have a deeper revelation. More than a passing reading. Amen. Look at Proverbs. How many of you have read Proverbs 18.10 before? Raise up your hand. Sure. Don't mind me. I knew everybody, everybody will have read it. And many of us is one of the scriptures you quote every time. Yes or no? Okay. But look at this. Proverbs 18.10. The name of the Lord is a strong power. The righteous run it into it and he say. Amen. Everybody gives God different names. But God has different names. I'm going to tell you two this morning. But beyond name, 
Proverbs 18, 10 is revealing to us the spiritual nature of the name of God. The spiritual nature of the name of God. The spiritual nature of the name of God. You must have the picture of the spiritual nature of the name of God before your faith in that name can be enhanced. You must have the picture of the name, the spiritual nature of the name of God before your faith in that name can be enhanced. And when your faith in that name is enhanced, that name begins to work for you. Did you hear what I just said now? You must have the picture of the spiritual nature of the name of God before your faith can be enhanced and before that name begins to work for you. Otherwise, you will be calling the name religiously and it will be empty and powerless. What is the, what is the spiritual nature of the name of the Lord? The Bible says, in the spirit, the name of the Lord is a what? Not just a tower, but a what? A strong tower. Did you hear that? What do you know God to be? Jehovah. Every time you say Jehovah, beyond the letter J-E-H-O-V-A-H, Jehovah, in the spirit, it is more than just letter Jehovah. It is a strong power. Hello, somebody. Let me give you this because I need to explain that point. Let me give you this example. I have a father in the flesh. I have brothers and sisters. Some I'm older than. Many are older than me. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's my that's my physical history. That's my physical history. So my brothers, my senior brothers and senior sisters will just say, ah, that's Kyle Day now. They have no problem relating with me. And when they want to introduce me, they say, that's my Aburo. That's my junior brother. Yes or no? Praise God. Hello? Right. But that is just a little of me that they know. The danger of it is this. You don't know a man until you know the grace he carries. Paul the apostle said, we have not known men after the flesh. I got what I'm saying now. One of the reasons why the people of Nazareth did not get the, did not partake in the grace of God upon the life of Jesus was that they, need, they thought that all he was in the flesh is all he is. He was bringing a spiritual thing to them. They were responding with what they know about him in the flesh. And they miss out. Listen to me. A proud man will not relate with this revelation. And that's why many people have missed their grace. Did you hear what I'm saying now? So when Jesus got into Nazareth, the only thing they knew about him was, is it not the carpenter's son? But that's not on the platform that Jesus is coming from. The carpenter's son does not heal the sick. The capital son does not raise the dead. It is the Jesus Messiah that raised the dead. When you relate with Jesus as Jesus the Messiah, you partake in the grace that he carries. When you relate with Jesus the Messiah, you have a picture of who he is in the spirit. And then you partake in that grace. But the mistake of the brothers of Jesus and the people of Nazareth was that they were relating with Jesus the carpenter. And they missed their portion. Up till this morning, they never got it. I want to pray for you, you won't miss your portion. So if there is an issue now, and uh, maybe I went to my senior brother or my senior sister, whatever, or anybody that is older than me physically, and I say, 
do it this way, do it this way, do it this way. Listen everywhere. Listen everybody. And he sees me as, is it not coyote? He, he, he will say, even my junior brother told me to do it this way. You know, he's going to miss a divine counsel. He's going to miss a wisdom. And he's going to miss out on grace. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But if he saw that this is a servant of God, this is the word of the Lord. You know he's going to partake in the grace. And before you know what is happening, the problems will be over. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. It's very important to understand that. Because when you relate with people in the flesh, you will be limited. But when you have a revelation of who people are in the spirit, you can partake in what they carry. And then become, and your journey in life will be faster. Are you following what I'm saying now? Are you following what I'm saying now? It's easier for people to miss out when they don't know the nature, the spiritual nature of somebody or the spiritual nature of a thing. It's easier for them to miss out. Now, if my old schoolmate is a member of this church now, Anytime he comes in, I will have to discuss with him. Do you want me to pastor you or you? Because when we were in secondary school, there is a name they used to call me. I won't tell you. Praise God. And most of my mates in the secondary school, if we still see today, he just called me that name. I say, how are you? How are you? And we greet ourselves. But if he comes as a member in the church now, I will have to have a discussion because I need to orientate him. Otherwise, he will miss out. Because every time I come on, on, on the pulpit on Sunday, he won't see the pastor. He won't see an anointed man. He won't see the grace of God for me. He will be looking at, ah, ah, is he not? Ah, ah, is he not? Ah, ah. Praise God. And that if he sees that, if he's calling me that and relating with me that, he will be missing out many things. Schoolmate does not mean grace mate. That is a big difference. Did you hear what I just said now? Praise God. How many of you know that the mother of Jesus, Mary, will go to hell if she doesn't accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior? How many of you agree that Mary would have been in hell now if she never accepted Jesus as her Savior and Lord? But she was the one that was in labor that pushed, that pushed until the Savior came out. But she must not see that in the flesh. Must relate with the grace he carries. And I thank God that woman had a revelation. Among all the children, I have this one. It's a special child. He said, Pastor, were you there? How did you know? I know in the marriage at Cana of Galilee, he went to him and said, they don't have wine. Was Jesus the, the bridegroom? Was Jesus the brother of the bridegroom? Was Jesus the master of ceremony? Was Jesus the father of the bride or the father of the groom? Why will it be that it is Jesus that the mother will now say they don't have wine? No. That woman was talking out of revelation. She knew that this Savior can do something about this situation. So do something now. Thank God you are here now. Do something now. And Jesus said, woman, what, what's, what's your trouble with me? My time has not come. And he said, okay, sir. And he went and met them and said, you see that man there? Whatever he tells you, do it. Proud people will miss their provision. Proud people will do what? We miss that. A proud man was there. I would say, what about that man? What about that man? Even the cloth I'm wearing is better than his own. Who is he? But you know, the people he told, they also catch that revelation. She said, that man, whatever. Somebody say whatever. Even if he tells you stupid things, do it. Because that is the meaning. 
whatever he tells you to do, do it. And did Jesus tell them anything reasonable? What did he say? He told them what is against their sense of reasoning. They needed wine. He said, fill the pot with water. Oh, that's still reasonable. Good. They went and fetched it. We don't know what he would do. Bring it out. They brought it out. Take it to the master of ceremony. <laughs> it is at that point that somebody will say, excuse me, sir. Come and take it to yourself. If you don't want to be embarrassed, you will not get on grace. Because it's not every time that you'll be told things that are reasonable. But it's every time that the spiritual truth work, even though it doesn't, it's not reasonable. You know the story? When the master of ceremony tasted it, he knew that this one is even better than the one we have been drinking. And he began to accuse the bridegroom, not knowing that the bridegroom doesn't even know where this wine came from. I know it was after the ceremony that day that they would tell him what happened. He doesn't know. And then the master of ceremony went to the bride. What is wrong with you, you this bridegroom? And what is wrong with you? Every other person will bring a very good wine, better wine that people, when people have drank and drank and they have lost their sense of taste, you now bring a substandard one. But you, you have kept this better wine till now. I'm sure the bridegroom will be looking at him. What are you saying? Praise God. So that woman knew her the revelation of Jesus. That was why she could partake in the grace he carried. I don't want to, I want you to have a revelation of the name of God. God said Jehovah. That's good. Almighty God. That's good. El Shaddai. That's good. Jesus. That's good. But beyond all the world, this is the spiritual nature of the name of the Lord. It is that spiritual nature that provokes faith that makes you untouchable. The name of the Lord is a what? A strong power. A strong power. So every time you call the name of the Lord, in the spirit there is a strong power. A place of covering. A place of refuge. A defense. When you call the name Jesus, you know what you are building in the spirit? A strong power. Beyond J-E-S-U-S. If God open your eyes in the spirit, it's a strong tower you will see. Did you hear something? Did you hear? When you call Jesus, that is a strong tower in the spirit that you can run into. Strong tower. That talks of protection. That talks of preservation. That talks of covering. That talks of defense. Somebody say, what does the name of Jesus have to do with coronavirus? Oh, it has everything to do, you know. The Bible said the name of the Lord in the spiritual form. That one is not in the Bible, but I'm just explaining. Is a what? A strong power. The righteous what? Runs into it. How do we run into it? We run into it by releasing our faith in that name. We run into it by releasing our faith in that name. And then they are saved. I told mommy, I said, you know, when those thieves attacked you last year, and they pointed gun at you, because she's the first person I share my revelation with, because that was a picture that came to my spirit. When I read that, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. What is it about the name of the Lord? In the spirit, it is a strong tower. Did you hear that? So when they pointed the gun at you, and then you shouted, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Like, Naturally, you should be afraid. But since faith has taken over, there is no room for fear. Even Mrs. Olorun Logbon that used to be very, very fidgetry in, in the flesh. That she can't, she can't kill uh, a fowl. She was struggling with the thief for the gun. That's not natural. Fear has died. Faith has taken over. 
And then mommy was calling Jesus, 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 Jesus. The more the harassment, the louder the, the, the proclamation of the name of Jesus. I said, you know what is happening? Every time you call Jesus in the spirit, there is a strong tower around you. A strong tower around you. Men can't see it, so it doesn't make sense to them. But the Bible said the name of the Lord, whatever name you call, that is having something to do with the Lord. <laughs> In the spirit, it is a what? A strong tower. A strong tower. And as you call it in faith, you are running into it. Definitely, you will be saved. Is that scripture applicable to this coronavirus issue? Or sickness or disease? Is that applicable? Hello? Because sickness always wants to compromise your safety. Disease wants to compromise your safety. But the name of the Lord is a strong tie. The righteous run into it and they say, I don't think you should find it difficult to understand that statement. Now, how many of you believe that the Bible is a sword? How many of you believe the Bible is a sword? Huh? A sword. Which kind of sword? Talk to me. Physical sword? Sword of the spirit. You remember in Ephesians chapter 6 when the Bible says, and take the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. In, if, in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, the Bible says, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than two double-edged sword. A double-edged sword is sharp, but the word of God is what? Sharper. Somebody say sharper. So the word of God is not just a sword, it's a sharper sword. There is no sword in the physical that is as sharp as the word of God. So listen to me, how does it work? What do you do? What do you use physical sword to do? To fight. You, you, you wield it. And if there is any name that is coming, you, you are going to fight. You are going to fight. You are going to fight. You are going to fight with the sword. The same thing in the spirit. When the devil brings his dart and tells you, you know you can die before the end of this year. And then you say, I shall not die. But leave and declare the works of the Lord. You know what you have done? You have drawn the sword in the spirit. Against that dart. Is somebody hearing me now? Every scripture you confess is a sword in the spirit that you draw. So the devil knows it. That's why the devil doesn't want you to have the word of God in your mouth. And then he said, it's a double-edged sword. Somebody said double-edged sword. When God spoke it, the first blade was sharpened. When you speak it, the second blade is sharpened. Hello, somebody. How many of you know that sword has two blades? Sharpened side. It's only cutlass that is sharpened on one side. Once it is sharpened on both sides, it is what? It is what? When God spoke the word, the first blade was sharpened. When you are speaking what God has spoken, not what men are speaking of, when you speak what God has spoken, the second blade is So, you are wielding a sword in the spirit. The devil knows it. That's why he doesn't want the word of God in your mouth. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Because every time you put the word of God in your mouth, you are drawing a sword in the spirit. Look up, everybody. Do you wait for a man that pull out a sword against you? <laughs> Do you drink tea with that man? You spoke to a man, the next thing he did was to just draw the sword against you, ready to fight you. You wait. What will you do? That's why it is only the sword of the spirit that can take, put the devil to flight. If you are fasting and you are not speaking the word, the devil will stay with you. Just like he stayed with Jesus. 40 days, 40 nights. How many of you know that the devil was on that mountain? Talk to me now. You know the devil was on that mountain? 
Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Apart from the fact that not many of us have the capacity of Jesus fasting. The best you can do is to fast from morning till evening. Six o'clock, you break. And even at that, people will say, mm, you try. I know some people that by 9 a.m., their leg is shaking like this. Their brain is no longer coordinated. And then the body will shake. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, praise God. <laughs> some people like that. Not to talk of fasting day and night. No food. Day, night, day, night, day. The Bible says 40 days, 40 nights. Jesus fasted. I think that fast enough should be able to send the devil away. But you know the devil was on that mountain with Jesus. After he fast, they finish now. The devil now says, welcome. These are stones now. Turn them to bread. The only thing that put the devil to flight was the word that Jesus spoke. Came back again. Jesus spoke the word. Came back again. Jesus spoke the word. Jesus was consistent with drawing out sword in the spirit. So the devil knew that this man is not joking. He took to his heels. Fast from now till Jesus come. If you are not careful, the devil will help you break your fast. I'm not trying to belittle fast. I'm telling you, fasting without the word of God is hunger strike. Hunger strike. Are you hearing me now? So, if you understand that the word of God is a sword in the spirit, you should understand that the name of the Lord is a strong power in the spirit. Does it follow? Does it follow? So, the name of the Lord is a what? A strong power. That's what the Bible says. The name of the Lord is a strong power. I tell people, if any issue happen and you are so confused that you don't know what to do just begin to say Jesus 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 you know what you are doing you are creating a space for safety for yourself in the spirit such that that storm won't be able to carry you away not all of us we know how to pray especially in a period of emergency if you don't know what to just be say Jesus Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That is the guarantee that you will remain untouchable. Because every mentioning of the name of the Lord brings the appearance of a strong power in the spirit. And then your safety becomes guaranteed. Your covering becomes guaranteed. No rain can beat a man that is under a house. If we're here now, and the rain starts to fall, will it beat you where you are? But if you step outside, will the rain touch you? Oh yes, if you stay long, will you become wet? Yes. But when you stay under this roof, let the rain begin to fall. The best we could do, we can lock up the window, lock up everywhere, and all that. And you stay here, it's not going to touch you. So every time you call the name of the Lord, you are coming under the roof of his shelter. Because a strong tower appears in the spirit and guarantees your safety. So, the rain of life will not beat you. The sun of life will not beat you. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? Oh, shout hallelujah somebody. I don't know if this revelation excites you, but it excites me. The name of the Lord is a what? It's a strong tower. When I know that it's a strong tower in the spirit, ah, I have faith to call that name. And that name guarantees my safety. Is that clear? So let's go back to Psalm 20, verse 7. Oh, Jesus, help us today. Amen. Psalm 20, verse 7 and 8. Some trust in chariot and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Now look at verse 8. They are brought down and are falling, but we are risen and we stand upright. 
Now, if you look at that verse 8, the Bible revealed to us that there are two kinds of results in life. There are two kinds of results in the world. The first result is that some will fall down, some will stand upright. Why? Hello, somebody. I'll read verse 8 again. They are brought down. That's a result in life. And falling. Brought down and falling. Somebody say brought down and falling. That's a result in life. Number two, but we are risen and stand upright. That's another result in life. Hello? Hello? They. Who are the they? Those that trust in chariots. Those that trust in horses. They are brought down. So their trust was a wasted investment. They are brought down and fallen. But we are risen and stand upright. Who are the we that are risen and stand upright? That not just trust the name of the Lord, but that remember the name of the Lord in the time of crisis. We can't have the same result even though we face the same storm. Hello? I don't know if you are hearing what I'm saying. We face the same storm. We can't have the same result. We can't have the same outcome. Because our, the investment of our trust is not in the same thing. Some trust in chariot. Some trust in horses. But what is the result of their trust? They are brought down and fallen. How many of you know that there are many people in the world today that are brought down and fallen? Up till today, people are still being brought down. People are still falling. Hello? Now, but we, we do more than trust in God. We remember the name of the Lord our God. And we are risen and stand upright. Do you know that some people are still rising today? And still standing upright? Praise God! So there are two different results in life. Even though we face the same storm. There are two different results. Some people have their confidence is in the arm of flesh. When the Bible talks of horses and chariots, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. That is talking about the arm of flesh. Some people, their trust, their confidence is in the arm of flesh. Some people, their trust and confidence is in the wisdom of men. That is horses. Chariots and horses is, a, is revealing the wisdom of men. The arm of flesh. Some people, their trust and confidence is in natural resources. Natural resources. Things that we can see. Oh, beloved. Things that we can see. 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 Praise God. They trust in what we can see. They trust in, in, in the wisdom of men. They trust in the arm of flesh. They trust in natural resources. One, 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 one former governor died recently. I won't mention him. Praise God. At a point, they said, well, the drug that we use is in Bangladesh. In the middle of that lockdown. And his family thought, well, Bangladesh, drug, just recommend the drug. And they recommended the drug. And they released 50 million naira for somebody with a private jet to go to Bangladesh to go and fetch the drug. Assuming there was no drug, somebody would say it's because there was no drug. That's why the man died. Assuming there was no money, somebody would say if we had money, we would have saved him. 
That one collected 50 million naira with private jet, went to Bangladesh and brought a fake drug. No money can save in the day of death. Physical resources are useless to fight an attack from the devil. Because many people say money can do everything. That's stupidity. He said, but the Bible says money and started all things. Yes, it was written in the Bible. But listen to me. It is a statement pronounced by Solomon in a state of despondency. Solomon had already backslided. He had no spirit of God again when he spoke that word. That a statement in the Bible doesn't say it is correct. You must find out who is talking. So Solomon looked at everything. He said, money answer it all. How many of you know that there are many questions in the life of Solomon that money cannot answer? Talk to me. How mad can a man be when he has 700 wives and 300 concubines? You see that man is, is okay? Is he okay? Ha! 700 wives, 300 concubines. You think that man is okay? That man is a, if there is a name more than madness, who is it? That? Why can't his money answer that? How did he come to a conclusion that vanity upon vanity, all is vanity, if money can answer everything? So you better read your Bible very well. He said, money answered all things. That's what the Bible said. They even quote the place. Yes, it is written there. But Solomon was talking foolishly when the Spirit of God is no longer in him. You can't compare that statement with the statement of Jesus when he says, man shall not live by bread alone. Hello, somebody. So read your Bible very well. Don't follow the word of Solomon that was backsliding. At the end of the day, it was thunder that killed him in the house of Idol. It's like when, when, a, when, a, when, a, when, a, when a drunken man, a man that is drunk to stupor, <laughs> and he just, uh, 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 and he say, your mother, your mother. And then you are, you are fighting. Hey, hey, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? If that guy was mad, you are more mad. Because you should know that he has no sense. Hello? How many of you understand what I'm saying? If a drunken man look at you and say, your mother, your mother, your mother, will you fight? What will you do? <laughs> you shake your head. You say, ah, Alcohol is a bastard. Why? Because he doesn't know what he's saying. The next they ask him, this is what you said. You said me? No, not I know. He says, I can I say, am I mad? <laughs> Praise God. So that's exactly how Solomon was when he said money answered. Oh. But the reality is that there are issues that money cannot answer. Praise the Lord. If you make the arm of flesh your confidence, the wisdom of men your confidence, natural resource your confidence, the result you are going to get is that you will be brought down and falling. Is that okay? You will be brought down and falling. But if you trust in the name of the Lord and you remember the name of the Lord, the result you will get is that you will rise and stand upright. Are you following what I'm saying? Now? Those that remember the name of the Lord in the time of crisis, they stand upright. And they rise. Why? Because the force in the name of the Lord is stronger than the demonic forces around them. The power in the name of the Lord is stronger than the power of the storm facing them. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? 
the God is greater and stronger than the devil's forces. It is the force of the devil that brings men down and that make them to fall. Because what they trust, chariots and horses, which reflect the wisdom of men, the arm of flesh, and natural resources, has no force to face the forces of the devil. So such men are brought down and they are falling. But when we remember the name of the Lord our God, the force in the name of God we handle and subvert the forces of the devil. And then you will stand upright. Are you still with me? Amen. To fully understand the implication of the authority in the name of Jesus. We must go back to the Old Testament. And I'll tell you three things we'll pray. We'll go back to the Old Testament. To trace the different covenant names of God, which is covenant people. To fully understand the power in the name of Jesus. We must go back to the Old Testament. To trace the different covenant names of God. Which is covenant people. Anybody that know God must handle the process of naming names as sacred. I love somebody. You know why? God is not casual about giving names. God is covenant-minded when it comes to giving names. Many of us today have forgotten the Bible. That's why many people give their children useless, stupid names. Names that has no meaning. Because Mr. Bush is the president, former president of America, you now call your sons Bush. Where is your culture? Where is your scripture? If you are a good student of the Bible, you will know that great fathers of faith in the Bible don't just give stupid names. Their names have meaning. And every name has a covenant. When they say Ebenezer, the meaning of Ebenezer is up to this point the Lord has helped us. So every time they mention the name Ebenezer, they remember the occasion and the covenant. When they say Samuel, you say because I asked of him from the Lord. Every time that woman called her son Samuel, she remembered the covenant of divine response. And it strengthened her faith in God. Are you following what I'm saying now? When they say Jesus, Bible say, the meaning is that he will save his people from their sin. At the pronouncement of every name, it must be able to activate the covenant behind that name. When you say Moses, say because I draw him out of water. Hello, somebody. Everything, read your Bible very well. Everything had name. When they say Eve, it means the mother of all living. There is no name correctly in the Bible that has no covenant behind it. One of the ways the devil brings stone into the destiny of a young boy is when he, has, when he hijacked the naming service. I insist, when any member, any of our member, when they, when, they, when they give birth and they, I insist that before the day we are going to do naming service, let me see the name you want to give because I won't stand here and, and be looking stupid. I won't have to stand here and say, okay, <laughs> Baba, so that when I'm standing to pronounce the name, it's the first time I'm, no, 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 I'm not going to be a stupid pastor. And I don't want anybody to embarrass me. Hello? Hello? He said, 
daddy, how did you get all this? It's experience that taught me. Experience. Somebody say experience. Experience. I'm not, I'm not Johnny just come pastor. Experience. Experience taught me. Go and bring a stupid name. And then the, the pastor doesn't know anything about it. They collected from one demonic man in their village. Even the person that that person is naming that child after is a failure in his life. And the devil is looking for a bridge to pass the ancestral failure and causes of that person to this new life. You now go to the village. Hey, Atibima, Atibima, Atibima. And they give you useless, stupid name that you don't even know the meaning. <laughs> and then you now bring that name to me as your pastor. And you change it. Otherwise, you go to another church to do your naming service. <laughs> So I insist that three days before the naming service, send the name to me. And there are occasions that I will call the father of that. And you hear me now. Praise God. Hmm. Hmm. Hello. Wise members over the years will say, Daddy, what name do you give? That doesn't stop you from giving your, your, your own name. But wise sons still say, Daddy, what is your own name? We want to add your own. And I will say, give me time. And then the name will come. It's a prophetic name. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? When they, when they gave me the name Samuel, with what I'm doing today, it shouldn't be strange to you. I told one of my sons, he's Samuel. He's Samuel. The first day he came to church, I saw him as a pastor. And so when I was telling him, he said, ah, he said, ah, he said Daddy, ah, forget about it too. Ah, Pastor okay. It was recently this year that he called me and said, Daddy, I now agree with you. What will I do? I said, thank God you have agreed now. Because he Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So don't, don't give your children useless names. What's Mr. Bush? What's Mr. Stone? Somebody gave name. I said, what's the, he said Bernard. I said, what's the meaning of Bernard? Say, he said, I just like that name. I said, forget about your likeness. We are talking about the destiny of a soul. What is the meaning of Bernard? Don't be stupid. What's the meaning of Bernard? How many of you know that devil, devil is a good name to pronounce? Mary means sorrow. Because Mary is a synonym of Mara. It means bitterness. Judah or Judas means praise. Now, how many people will name their children Judas today? <laughs> because there was a stupid Judas before, so nobody wants to be a Judas again. <laughs> how many of you know that, 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 that we have fake Jesus all around town now? <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Before I got married, God gave me the names of all my children. I prayed. And God said, And your fellow Lua. Some people call it inye. I say, mm, it's not inye. It's inyo. Inyo. Oluwa. <laughs> and then, ore oluwa. I want this, only I'm like this style inye. Mm, it's a style. Revelation. I am not a stylish man. 
I'm not the to style. Because it's called to style. Only tolo un soni pa un uru koye. And God said, this will be the first one, this will be the second one, this will be the third one. I told mommy to write it down. We were not married. I said, write it down. Your first child will be a male. Your second child will be a female. And the last one will be a male. And these are their names. She wrote it down. We were in a retreat on, on a mountain around Idore area. And I said, this is what the Lord said. And she wrote down the name. I said, that's the name of our children. We were not married. So when she was pregnant with her young fair, she didn't go for any scan. No scan. So when she delivered, and I was called into the place, the first thing she told me was that, honey, your boy has come. And then the nurse asked her, madam, how did you know that he's a boy? Because we have not shown you. And then she smiled. <laughs> she said, I knew before now. I see alone new Jake in your ball. Come on, joy, what you that be couldn't in any mole. Oh, Nishin. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So it's a very serious thing. In the Old Testament, the first thing I want you to know is that God cut covenant with his people by revealing himself through his name. So there is no name that God called himself in the Old Testament that covenant is not supporting it. God cut covenant with his people. How? By revealing himself through his name. That's how God cut covenant with his people. In the Old Testament. God cut covenant with his people by revealing himself through his name. So it's not a casual process. Every opportunity that I have to give name to something, I don't I pray about it and I say, God showed me something. Because there is always a covenant behind every name. When God said we should begin to preach on Facebook, and then our technical crew came to me and said, Daddy, what is the name we are going to give that broadcast? I said, give me time. I went to pray. And the Lord said, navigating life through grace. It is not grammar. It is revelation. And God spoke to me that every word you'll be preaching under that broadcast will actually help my people to navigate life with grace on their side. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Anytime you have to, when, the, when we first got to our place, it was more bushy than it is now. We can count the number of houses there, there. And then we're having a meeting in that place one day. And they said, ah, we have not given this place name, oh. Let us give name. You know the usual landlord meeting. Give name. As at that time, there was only one Igbo man among us. Only one. You know what the man said? He said, hey, all of you are Yoruba people because I'm Igbo man. So give this name of this, let it be my name. <laughs> you see the selfishness of, of, of some people? <laughs> we, are fine, we are fine Igbo brothers, but uh, <laughs> this one is very selfish. <laughs> and then all the other people look at him and say, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm on now. And to Bedebi. So it received a no. Are you hearing me now? And then different people suggesting different things. I kept quiet. I was, I knew it was going to come to me. So I kept quiet. I was asking, oh God, when it comes to me, what will I tell them? What will I tell? Because they needed to register that name with the local government before they can put on their signpost. 
And then, as this one would just say this one, this one would say no. This one would say this one, would say, no. this one would say no. This one would say this one. At a point, they say no. We are not giving it to. We are not giving this street the name of anybody because tomorrow now, if party A, if you give the name of a street on the name of a, a person that is in party A, if party B takes over, that street will be forgotten forever. <laughs> How many of you understand that now? Hello. Maybe you say Mimiko quarters. Now that Mimiko is no longer there now, will you change it to Aketi quarters? If tomorrow Aketi is not there, will you now change it again? They say, we don't want our street. So forget about naming it to name. And, and somebody say, ah, Reverend, answer to us. What is the, what, what name should we give? I said, Grace quarters. And they say, yes, yes. You see the eyes of everyone go out. Oh, he said, praise God, praise God. And they wrote it down, grace cutters. Beloved, it is grace cutters. Are you hearing what I'm saying? now? Praise God. So if you have anything that is always covenant behind name, that is always covenant behind name, don't take name casual. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Don't take name casual. One of my daughters wanted to register a company. And she came to me and said, Daddy, what is the name I will give to this? I said, let me pray. And I came back and gave her the name. Because the God that knows the future will always call you by the name of the future, not the name of the present. How many of you agree with me that Abraham had no child when God said Abraham, which means the father of many nations. So God doesn't call you by your condition. He calls you by his conclusion in your life. Abraham had no single child when God changed him from Abraham to Abraham. And the meaning of Abraham is father of nations. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. So, in the Old Testament, God always cut covenant with his people by revealing himself through his name. Look at Genesis chapter 17. I read verse 1 and 4. That's the first thing I'll tell you. Two more things. Are we still together? Genesis chapter 17. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 4. And when Abraham was 90 years old, and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am what? Are you there? Are you there? Genesis 17, are you there? Okay, I'll start again. And when Abraham was 90 years old, and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, What? I am the Almighty God. I want you to underline that word, the Almighty God. That's a name of God. And it is a covenant name. It is a reflection of what God is about to say and what God is about to do for Abraham. The condition of Abraham will require the almightiness of God. Because the condition of Abraham defy sciences. A 90 year old man that is still expecting a child. How many of you agree with me that Abraham gave birth to Isaac when Abraham was 100 years? And Sarah was 90. No wonder God revealed himself to him, to him as the almighty God. Do you see the covenant behind that name? Hello? You see the covenant behind that name? It's only the almighty God that can make a 100 year old man to still father a child and that can make a 90 year old woman to still father, I mean mother a child. The revelation, the condition you face determine the revelation of the name of God you will have. And when God shows you, this is who I am, he's telling you, this is the weapon you will carry to your 
crisis and overcome that crisis. That's why the Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. For Abraham, God revealed himself as the almighty God. Walk before me and be perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. And will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face. And God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. How many of you know that it will take the almightiness of God for a man who has no child at 90 to still be expected to become father of nations? May you be wise. May you be sensitive. Watch out for the name that God revealed to his people. That is the expression of his power and what he can make possible in their life. So the almighty God in Hebrews means El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Somebody say El Shaddai. How many of you have heard that before? Many of you have heard El Shaddai before. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim Adonai, Etue, just still the same, and all that. El Shaddai is the Hebrew word for Almighty God. So, the Almighty God. Look up, everybody. Say the Almighty God. Say it again, the Almighty God. If they ask you what is the meaning of the almighty God, with the sense of grammar, English grammar, you will just say the God that is mighty. That's all. But he is beyond that. English grammar is a deficient, is deficient in interpretation. The Hebrew meaning of almighty God is El Shaddai. What does it mean? Write this down. Number one, it means the all breasty one. I love that name. The all breasty one. So when God says, I'm the almighty, the El Shaddai, the first thing is that he's the all breasty one. Did you get that? Number two, the all sufficient one. The all sufficient one. That is the almighty. The all sufficient one. Number three, the one who cannot be exhausted. I love that name. The one who cannot be exhausted. Man can be exhausted. Organs can fail. Resources can be exhausted. The, the one who cannot be exhausted. That is the meaning of almighty God. Number four. Am I correct? The one whose blessing is in multiples. The one whose blessing is in multiples. His blessing is in multiples. 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 He said one we chase it. One we chase what? A thousand. Two we chase ten what? Thousand. That's multiple. Multiple. If one should chase a thousand, ordinarily, how many do you think two would chase? Talk to me. Two thousand. But he says two would chase ten thousand. So from one to ten, you see how the multiple nature of his blessing. That's the meaning of the Almighty. Do you, know, do you now understand that the English translation is deficient in on Revelation? And then number next. The God that has no shortage. The God that has no shortage. His things are complete. That has no shortage. The God that has no shortage. There's no reduction. His things are complete. That's the almighty God. And finally, the God that has no lack. That's how many now? How many now? The six. The God that has no lack. So every time you look at God and you say the almighty God. This, this is what you are invoking. 
and may you remember it in the time of need. That's why the Bible says some trust in horses, some trust in that, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. As a result of that, they are brought down and falling. We are risen and stand upright. Even though we face the same storm, but we don't have the same result. Number two. The revelation of God's name in the Old Testament is not total at once. The revelation of God's name in the Old Testament is not total at once. It's not total at once. God didn't reveal himself totally at once to, to the people in the Old Testament. He, did, he revealed himself gradually. Beloved, stay with me. I will soon pray. Stay with me. Stay with me. God didn't reveal himself totally to the people of the Old Testament. So the revelation of the name of God to them is not total at once. He revealed himself gradually. Listen to this. He revealed himself gradually depending on the specific crisis or situation at hand. Depending on the specific crisis and situation at hand. Their condition determines the revelation of the name of God that will deal with that condition. This way I'm going today and I want you to catch that understanding. The revelation of the name of Jesus will take care of your condition currently. There is something about the name of God that deals with your situation. There is something about the name of God that handles your problem. That confronts and overcomes your crisis. That's the meaning of this, the name of the Lord is a what? Strong power. So when God revealed himself to Abraham, that revelation of Almighty to Abraham is after the order of the specific experience of Abraham. Abraham needed the intervention of the Almighty God. Because as far as science is concerned, his case of having child is close. And when the Almighty showed up, beloved, he became indeed the father of nations. Yes or no? So God revealed himself to his people gradually, gradually, depending on the issue they are facing, the issue they are handling, the situation at hand. How many of you agree with me that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They, they did not face the same problem with Moses. Hello? Or did they face the problem? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. They didn't face the same problem with Moses. No wonder the revelation of the name of God to them is not the same. I will show you in the Bible now. God showed, God revealed himself as El Shaddai, the almighty God, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Are you hearing me now? When he came to Moses, he revealed himself as Jehovah because the crisis has changed. So, the revelation must change. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So, each generation in the Old Testament knew, they knew God's name in part. Let me show you Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6. I read from verse 1 to 3. Is somebody getting something? Exodus chapter 6. I read from verse 1 to verse 3. Are you there? Then the Lord said unto who now? Unto who? 
Talk to me now. Unto Moses. Now shall thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of the God Almighty. Does it make any sense? Can you connect it to Genesis chapter 17 now? But by my name, what? Jehovah. Was I not known to them? Look up. I appear to Ab the, every, the totality of what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob know about me is what? Almighty God. El Shaddai. Till Abraham died, till Isaac died, till Jacob died, they were relating with the El Shaddai God. And it was indeed Almighty in their lives. Yes or no? But when it came to Moses, God said, the crisis has changed. So the revelation of my name must change. There is a name of God that can handle every crisis of your life. It is your revelation of that name that will help you to overcome every crisis of life. That is the meaning of the name of the Lord. He's a strong tower. Hello. And Moses he said, those people know me as Jehovah. They know me as almighty God. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. So what is God telling Moses? I am revealing another part of me to you. Because of the current crisis you are facing. I am more than almighty God. I am Jehovah. Somebody say Jehovah. That's another revelation. Any condition you face determines the revelation of the name of God. Beloved, the name of the Lord is indeed a what? A strong tower. I hope somebody got something. I'm going to pray for you now. I hope you got something. <laughs> Jehovah. Somebody say Jehovah. Somebody say Jehovah. When I told you the meaning of El Shaddai God, that is almighty. Now, write this. This is where I'm going to stop today. Next week, I'll pick it up there. The Jehovah God, who is he? Number one, is self existing self-existing <laughs> God that doesn't need anybody to exist self-existing praise God is there anybody in that class I told mommy this morning I said look you are not self-existing people will always know where to trace you Right? You are created by God. You are born into this world by Adebobola. You are married to Uwosheni. So in case you are missing, they all know where they can trace you. You are not self-existing. And beloved, you can locate yourself with my explanation. Nobody is self existent But Jehovah is what? self existent Tell me who created Jehovah. Hello? self existent That's Jehovah. Number two. The Jehovah God is self-sustaining. <laughs> Self-sustaining. Doesn't need anybody to for sustenance. The greatest crime a ketchup can commit is to not to pay salary. 
you will hear grammar in town. Yes or no? The seeming quietness that is very quiet, that on those states is very quiet, is because that guy is still paying salary. Let him stop paying salary now. Maybe for the next six months. I'm not talking of that. I'm not talking of percentages. So not nothing, nothing, nothing. For the next three months, you will hear grammar. Why? Civil servant need what Aketi is praying to sustain themselves. In fact, they will say, especially in this COVID nineteen. COVID is in trouble now. <laughs> because everything now is put on COVID-19 now. Even a very stupid, foolish person that is wasted and wasteful and wasting his resources is now COVID-19. That's an excuse. Hello? Either he pays it in full or he pays it in part or something comes at the end of the month. May not be enough. But the civil servant needs it for sustainer. Did you hear that? But God is what? Jehovah God is what? self sustaining self sustaining self sustaining The one that doesn't need anybody to sustain himself. You know, these are interesting days in this country. And I know more interesting days are coming ahead. There was a national chairman of a party that when he's talking, you think it's God that is talking. He will be shaking his head like this and talk authoritatively. But yesterday, he said, the person that say I should come and build the party is the same person that presided over the dissolution of my committee. So, a wise man must know when to stop. Otherwise, <laughs> they will bring out his file and they will show him. Was all of them half corner corner? Yo, Bani go sentan le wudi e koma ba gbembe. Hello. So he needs that higher power to sustain his post. But once that higher power pull back, that's the end of his post. He said, even the case he instituted, he withdraw. I said, no withdraw, no withdraw. Continue. Continue. Praise God. Oh, beloved, God is self sustaining. Number three, Jehovah God is self sufficient. Self sufficient. That's Jehovah, self sufficient. <laughs> You now see what God, you now see the God that was in action in Egypt. You now see the God that delivered them from Egypt. <laughs> Jehovah God. More than almighty, Jehovah God. Jehovah God is covenant cutting God. Covenant cutting God. We don't make covenant. We cut covenant. That's Jehovah God. Jehovah God is covenant keeping God. Covenant keeping God. He cuts covenant. He keeps covenant. And finally, covenant remembering God. Covenant remembering.
Are you with me now? So this Jehovah God revealed himself in seven names. Seven different ways. Known as the covenant or redemptive name of the Lord. I'm going to share that with you next week. So next week what I will be doing is to share the seven redemptive name of Jehovah. And how it is connected to the name of Jesus. You will know we have a better advantage as believers of the new covenant. If Jehovah worked for them in the Old Testament, by next week you will see how much more Jesus will work for you in the New Testament. Are you hearing me now? I want you to rise up. I want to very specially. Are you blessed this morning? Listen to this. Don't clap. May, may your confidence be put in the name of the Lord. That's a decision you must make today. Are you going to choose to put your confidence in the name of the Lord? And you are going to remember the name of the Lord no matter the crisis of life. I want to pray for you that the Christ will not take the name of the Lord away from your memory. Give me some 20 verse 7 and 8. Because my prayer for you is from the two scriptures that I read when I want to start. Psalm 20 verse 7 and 8 and Proverbs 18 10. I don't know the condition you are dealing with currently. The solution is in the name of the Lord. Coronavirus, bow to the name of Jesus. Lassa fever, bow to the name of Jesus. Whatever has a name, bows to the name of Jesus. You must have a faith in the name of Jesus that is more than the fear you have in your condition. Many of us, the fear we have in our condition is more than the faith we have in the name of God. You must have faith in the name of God. Bible says some trust in Sharia, some trust in... You will not be among the some that are trusting in the arm of flesh. You will not be among the some that are trusting in natural resources. Or that are trusting in the wisdom of man. May you be among the we that will not only trust the Lord but that will remember the name of the Lord our God. Verse 8. Because if you do that, they are brought down and fallen. But you will be among those who will be risen. This is the time of falling for the people of the world, but beloved, this is your time of rising. This is your time of rising. This is your time of rising. When the process of death is happening in your life, it is not the end. It is the beginning of a new phase of life. Because there are some of the process of death is happening in our life. When Jesus was taken to Calvary and they were killing him, they actually killed him. And he was taken to the grave. It was the preparation for his rising. Is somebody hearing me now? When the process of death is happening in your life, it is your preparation for rising. It is not the end of your life. There are some of us now that you are in a season now that shows that there is a process of death going on now. God is preparing you for a rising. It is not the end. And may your faith in the name of the Lord during the process of death not fail. May your faith not fail. May your faith not fail. May you not be among the people that would deny the Lord. The Bible says, if weeping endure for a night, joy cometh where? Cometh in the morning. But may you 
continually trust God, trust the name of the Lord in the night of affliction. So that you can get ready for the morning of your joy. In the name of Jesus. May you not just hear this message, may you understand it. May you apply it. May you walk in life by them. May you have victory. May you have a conviction in your heart that there is no condition that the name of the Lord cannot take care. And may you remember, among anything, may you remember the name of the Lord. Beyond anything, may you remember the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. May you see the name of Jesus as the weapon that will take care of the problems of life. For you, in the name of Jesus. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and we stand upright. That's why your case is different. Because you have a resource of the spirit that takes care of your condition. In the name of Jesus. Let the name of the Lord be the strong tower around your life. Not only in this season, but in all season. In all season, in all season. Your house is enveloped. Your life is covered. Amen. Your paths are covered and preserved. Amen. Your children are preserved. Amen. Every activities of your life are preserved. Amen. You and death, you will never cross paths. In the name of Jesus. You and coronavirus will never cross paths. In any way, not only coronavirus, any form of sickness, you will never cross paths with it. And whatever sickness are taking hold of your body, I take authority over it in the name of Jesus. I break the yoke of sickness. I break the yoke of disease. In the name of Jesus, I activate the law of the spirit of life to take over in your cells, take over in your tissue, take over in your organs, take over in your system. In the name of Jesus. The report card of the world is there is casting down. But I speak over you as a person under the covenant of the name of the Lord that for you there is lifting up. I can't hear you. For you there is lifting up. For you there is lifting up. The, post, the name of the Lord will be the positive difference in your life. Will be the positive difference in your situation. In the name of Jesus. Even if you are facing the same storm with other people in the world, your result will be outstandingly different. May you not allow anything to take the name of the Lord away from your mouth. May nothing else replace the name of the Lord in your life. In the name of Jesus. Let the hand of the Lord come upon you like never before. Because you are called by the name of the Lord. Let the power of God take over in your life. Breaking every yoke, destroying every limiting factor. Let the name of Jesus override every issue, any protocol in your life, and bring you to that desired destination. In the name of Jesus, you will not partake in the crisis of the world, you will not partake in the sorrows of this world, you will not partake in the calamities and the death of this world. The name of the Lord will shield you, the name of Jesus will cover you, protect you, preserve you. Fight for you and preserve your life. You receiver, that is your portion. I want you to give the Lord the glory this afternoon. Give him all the praise. Worship his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name.